Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Gilmo. Over there or over there, depending on hey which everybody. side. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's Christopher Drake. Our show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at... I don't know why you're talking like that, but uh, HockeyLockerMilwaukee.com. <laughs> All righty, folks. You can also call the Milwaukee Admirals, eh? Uh, 414-227-0550. Yeah, you can get your uh, season tickets and 10 game packs for the upcoming hockey season. Correct, which and should be starting at, uh, early Tom, October. We sent you. Regular season starts in early October. Sprint, uh, training camp starts in September. Hopefully we can get back to normal. However, thanks to you guys, the Florida Everblades, we will be covering hockey probably well into June. Yeah, thanks, ECHL. You keep adding games with no uh, heads up to us. They don't even put it. They don't even put out a press release talking about their adding games. Yeah, they used to earlier in the year, and now they're just like, who cares, here, right? They're just throwing here. games out there. They're yeah. like, they're like, we 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 cost you games last year. Here's some more. Here's some more. Here's some yeah. More. At the rate this season's going, they're probably going to end up playing like 94 games. What they said is the season has to end before July 4th. How or... can it if they keep adding games to the schedule? Because they have a playoff to play too, you know. Eight teams, that's it. I notice, but each series is best of seven. And if you keep adding games on to the end of the season, how can you meet that? Well, I think they're done now, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you. Hello, you don't need a you don't need a piece of paper saying you're a marketing degree guy. You could have a marketing degree without going to school. I just gave you a marketing idea. Ooh. Oh yeah, go over to YouTube. Give, give us a subscribe. Click that little bell to get notified. You know, like give, give our videos a like if you like them. Comment if you want to comment. Also, Constructive thank you. criticism only. If you're well, trolling, you'll be deleted. Yes, you're, if you troll, um, any website dropping will be instantly deleted. We won't even click on it. It just will be deleted. Yep. Unless you're leaving a comment with a reputable site. Yeah. Don't well, like I said, if you have constructive criticism or a comment, feel free. Also, like us on Facebook. Give us a follow. Get all that nonsense out of the way. All righty. Um, also, adding in. Uh, there is um, uh, some uh, working being done slowly on the uh, Matthias Ekholm trade front, but there's n there's three teams battling it out, so I guess we just wait and see. But right now, Boston, uh, Philadelphia, and uh, the Panthers are all. Uh, trying to make a play for him, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, that was. Our... I'm, I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting, aren't you? So we'll see what happens. But all righty, stats. Uh, what game are we doing? The uh, South Carolina Stingrays visited uh, Estero, Florida, Hertz Arena today. Yeah, for the 500th time this year, they have about 300 games to go against these guys. They had about 3,000 in attendance tonight, too. Yeah, they did have a pretty nice crowd. It was a first responder night. They wore the first responder jerseys. I thought they looked pretty cool. All right, first period. Florida outshot South Carolina 12-9. Uh, then the second period, Florida outshot the Stingrays 13-9. And then Carolina outshot Florida 11-10 in the third. Total shots were 35-29. All righty. Florida was 2 for 5 on the power play. South Carolina was 0 for 3. Uh, That's a good thing. That's 12 a good penalty thing. minutes for South Carolina, 18 for Florida. Uh, 12 of those go to Arvin Atwell. I was about to say, Arvin Atwal with six minutes left in the third period. He gets ejected. He gets into a fight, goes to the penalty box, 
And then he starts yelling at the Stingray player in the other penalty box, and the referee's like, nah, uh you're out of here, and kicked Atwal out of the game. So good job, Atwal, you and your lead, leading penalty minutes. If that don't get him a, a, some type of suspension, I don't know what will, to be honest. He's always getting penalized. It's, well, maybe it's just who he is. But anyway, let's get into the stats. All righty. First period, nothing. Next. Yeah, first period scoring. Yeah, nada. Second period, that would be one of the power play goals at the 13-14 mark. Colby Sissons, his second as an Everblade, with an assist from Michael Huntenbreaker. Then, nothing else the rest of the second. Yeah. There was a slashing call by Justin Florick, former Milwaukee Admiral Justin Florick. Yeah, that happened at the 1152 mark for the Stingrays. The Stingrays in the first period also got a penalty by Caleb Herbert. That was a high-sticking double minor. Drew Uh, Blood. Yep. That four minutes automatically means he drew blood. Yeah. I was about to say that, but knock yourself out. <laughs> All right, third uh, period, go. 501 mark, leave Co Cooper with his 10th of the year with an assist from Joe Pendenza, another former admiral. There's a lot uh, of former admirals on this team. Also, at the 1550 mark, power play goal number two of the night. That would be Michael Huntenbreaker with an assist from Colby Sissons and Joe Pendenza. So Sissons with two points, Huttenbrinker with uh, two points. Then at the 1809 mark, I believe this was also a breakaway. I'm not 100% sure, but if I remember hearing it correctly. I don't think it was either. Um, Michael Huttenbrinker with a goal at equal strength. Uh, with an assist by Colby Sissons and Miles Powell. Yeah. But at the 1342 mark of the third, that's when Atwal, he got a game misconduct, and he also got an unsportsmanlike. All at the same time, so yeah, 12 penalty minutes for Atwal. And that for South Carolina, oh boy. Huh. He had a pretty good game. This is a pretty solid game today. All right. And net for uh, South Carolina was Hunter Shepard. He stopped 31 of 35 uh, with an 88.571 save percentage. Uh, had four goals against, no penalty minutes. Um, Jake? Hildebrand in net for the Everblades. First shutout win in yep. green. Congratulations, Hildebrand. Dude, this is a good goalie battle that first two periods and then third period, the floodgates opened up. All right, three stars of the game. You Colby. and Hildebrand. Colby Sissons, a goal and two assists. Michael Huttenbreaker, two goals and an assist. <laughs> he has three points. Want to hear the funny part about that? Colby Sisson's goal was assisted by Michael Huttenbreaker. Both of Michael Huttenbreaker's goals were assisted by Colby Sisson's. <laughs> That's uh, pretty funny how that works out. Uh, Huttenbreaker now has 16 goals on the season, uh, leading the Everblades. Yeah. And Breaking your first news star on Michael the- Huttenbreaker's good at hockey. And your first star of the game. That's not even an argument. Jake Hildebrand with the shutout. Hildebrand with the shutout. That's a good night. Your referee was Sean McFarland. Hey, Chris, don't we know that guy from the AHL somewhere? Hey, even though Zebras got to get some work, don't they? Yeah. Wait, are we allowed to call them Zebras on this show? Uh, Well, technically. Uh, well, I just did, so we zebras. can't really edit it out. The linesmen are zebras. The referee's kind of like a slightly deformed zebra. Oh, you mean a mule? Yeah, because, you, you know, they have that orange stripe going right down their back. Oh. Okay. Anyway, uh, linesman was Killian McNamara. And, oh, my goodness, a, a new linesman, Billy and Gubleman. Look at that. You butchered the guy's name after you just said, oh, my God, there's a new one. 
Yeah, well, I don't know. So, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but man, the Everblades are playing great hockey. I'm, I'm very happy to cover this team. I'm not happy with how the ECHL announces games getting added to the schedule. Yeah. Well, we they did supposed, say they were, we were supposed to have the night off on Tuesday, but no, Florida had to have a magical game appear. Yeah. They just love making us play the Solar Bears, don't they? We have like 12 games left against them. That's not an exaggeration. <laughs> All righty. So, all right. On a normal note, were this a regular season, the Florida Everblades would be first in the whole league. Right now, they're first in the uh, conference. However, Lady Fort Wayne Comets are first in the league. They are 9 1 and 2. Nine, yeah, two only and by one. winning percentage, but yeah. They've only played 13 games. Yeah, like they are slowly opting back in with places opening back up. So, for those of you in the ECHL market, you're probably going to have a 97 game schedule because yeah. everybody's going to need teams to play. Because you know, um, I uh, well, I guess the opt out, opt in, back in date is passed because now the schedule's like they said it's officially final. So why did they add additional games to the Everblades schedule? They didn't have them. They they had these games were in the works, but they didn't have them scheduled via opponent. So they just give us more more solar bears yeah they love the solar bears give them like 20 more games against them yeah they already played them like 90 times <laughs> definitely feels that way all right so i want to I- have any issue if we played indy or wheeling or somebody else you know other than the same five teams we've been playing all year all right in the eastern conference the top four teams are the florida everblades indy fuel orlando solar bears and greensville swamp rabbits they are heads up beyond everyone under orlando is um Scratching and clawing to be around that fourth spot. Um, the Iceman and South Carolina are both at 500. Um, and uh, the Greensville Swamp Rabbits are a little over halfway between, so they're at 0.561. So <clears throat> still a lot of hockey to be played. They are playing a 76 game schedule. So yeah, that's probably going to hit 82 at the right there, gone. I can't trust them anymore. I'll look at their website. I'll look at their schedule. I'll add the days to my calendar. Then I look at my calendar. Games are missing. Games are added. Nobody's telling me what. Yeah, only person that I, I don't know. The only I, person that tells me games are added is Dan, because you are smart and has that automatic update for your calendar i actually just did that too tonight (laughs) yeah all righty so coming up tomorrow we have the florida everblades and orlando solar bears round 684 and then we got the nashville predators versus tampa bay lightning so it's gonna be a mixed bag but we got two different shows for you tomorrow uh, correct. Also, um, we'll be in the same room tomorrow. Correct. And we'll probably do it in the system, seeing how I'll be at your house. We might as well get it out of the way. Yep. So we'll see you all tomorrow. Don't forget to check out our sponsor, Hockey Locker. And click YouTube. We click need subscribers. I was just about to say, click subscribe on YouTube and hit that bell, light the lamp, so you can get notified every time we upload a video. Yep, we need YouTube subscribers. Thank you to all the people who watched our Carolina um, Nashville video last night. Also, all of y'all, rock it out. Yep, thanks, guys. Peace. All right.